Okay, another uh, common type of problem here is is dealing with ropes or, or strings, uh, and it involves forces of tension. Okay, forces of tension, and and here are some typical typical problems involving force of tension. Uh, first of all, just to give you a little background here, if I have uh, an object, okay, that could be a sign or something hanging here. Okay, uh, it's just something hanging. Uh, this object here will be, um, you know, I'll have some certain certain mass. If an object's hanging here, and I'm going to just make it hanging by, uh, let's say, one rope. Okay. It's hanging by one rope. Well, in this case, if it was suspended in midair, it's going to have a force of gravity pulling down, but also a force of tension pulling up. Now, if this was just hanging in midair, this force of tension okay, would have to be equal to magnitude to the force of gravity, because the net force is equal to zero. Okay. And these two are going to cancel each other. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, if it, you know, and often they're not going to give you one rope. Often they're actually going to give you two ropes, and so you're going to have two forces. They're going to call this force of tension one, force of tension two. Okay, both these are going to be pulling up. Now, this won't apply here, where force of tension is equal to force of gravity. In fact, what will happen now is that if the net force was still equal to zero, okay, if that was still equal to zero, it turns out that uh, F T one plus F T two has to be equal to the force of gravity. Okay, these two will actually add up to be equal to the force of gravity, because if I add this plus this minus force of gravity, I should get zero. Okay, so notice here um, that this is happening. Often these will be exactly the same; they'll pull equally. Okay, because they're both pulling up. If I added a third rope, you could add that uh, accordingly. One uh, challenging thing, though, that happens is if we have ropes at angles. And I'll just show you an example, uh, a typical example of that. If a rope is at an angle, it could look something like this. Um, what I have here is I'm going to have the ceiling. So here's the ceiling. Uh, and there's a rope hanging from it that's connected to a sign. Yeah, that should be connected to a sign. So here's the ceiling, um, a rope, and it's connected to some sign with the mass M. Of course, this logically wouldn't sit like this, so I'm going to make another rope attached to a wall. Here's a wall. Okay, another rope is attached here. So there's two ropes, one pulling horizontally and one pulling at an angle. Um, I could even say that this angle is theta with the vertical. Okay, pulling up there. Now, what happens here is that if this angle is theta and this is m, okay, and this is pulling horizontally, let's label our forces here. Well, obviously. There's a force of gravity pulling down. There's a force, I'm going to call this force of tension one. And I'm going to call this guy force of tension two. Okay, so this rope is force of tension two. This rope is force of tension one. And this is force of gravity. And here's your mass. And at an angle theta. You'll notice right away that because we're dealing with a complicated scenario here, it's it's kind of difficult to see where the forces would cancel. But we know here that the net force has to be zero because um, because it's not moving and it's not accelerating. Okay, because it's not accelerating. So let's take a look. Um, if we're using trig here, we know here that uh, dividing this one into components, that F T two actually is going a little bit up and a little bit to the right. Okay, going up, I'm going to call that F T Y. Actually, F T two Y. This one I'm going to call F T two X. Okay, this one here is F T two X. Well, we should notice here, and we could use trig to solve for these if we knew it force tension, but no notice here that F T two Y has to be equal in magnitude to which one? Well it has to be equal in magnitude to force of gravity. These are the only two forces pulling up and down, only vertical forces. So in fact F T two Y Okay, minus FG would equal zero because the net force in the Y is equal to zero. Okay, so you end up getting something like this. What about the X? Well, in the X direction, the net force, uh, the only two pulling horizontally are FT1 and this, FT2X, the, the horizontal component of FT2. So in fact, we also know here that FT2X minus FT1 also has to equal zero. Keeping these in mind allow you to switch some variables and, and are better able to solve complicated problems like this.